I couldn't tell you where my work began and I can't tell you where uh, it's going. I think I've always been fascinated by the variety of uh, human experience, human languages, human cultures, uh, human uh, ways of living and interacting. So this has been something that has interested me forever. Yes, <laughs> yes, we are animals uh, like other animals and also radically different from an other animals. No other animal develops the kinds of systematic bodies of knowledge that we develop. No other animal transforms their world as dramatically as we transform ours. Uh, one of the really interesting things we learn in studying other animals is how similar we are to them and how different we are. And I think uh, studies probing both those similarities and those differences are needed uh, to really understand how human minds work. Well, I always tried to study adults, but as I said, they're just much too hard. We're too complicated. We know too much. Uh, I found it really difficult to think about uh, knowledge in the adult form and how it's organized. But when we study infants, we see creatures who know much less than we do and yet have probably the most powerful learning capacities on the planet. So by studying them early, we can ask both what their initial abilities are and what the limits to those abilities are. And then we can follow them over time and see how children build on those abilities to start to work their way into uh, our rich and vibrant cultures. We seem to be able to take everything that we know and relate it to everything else that we know, uh, getting insights into all sorts of disparate phenomena through this kind of integrative intelligence. I've been really interested in where that comes from. And infants are an interesting uh, population in which to look for it because initially their understanding of different aspects of the world seems to be quite separate from one another. Even uh, something as simple as their understanding, two different kinds of understanding of people, understanding people as agents who act on the world and cause changes in it, and understanding people as social beings who share experiences with other social beings. Those seem to be quite separate for very young infants. Uh, as one of your um, former uh, Heineken Prize winners, Mike Tomasello, showed though, at the end of the first year, these abilities start to come together. And for the first time, you start seeing uniquely human ways of engaging with other people and understanding them. And I think that's showing this species-specific kind of integrative intelligence at work. I think the future is presenting us with an enormous number of questions. I think in order to address those questions, we're going to need cognitive science uh, even more than we've needed it in the past. Now, I think it's fair to say that as long as we've existed as a species, in fact, even longer, some of the ancestors to, to the uh, Homo sapiens, uh, we've been technologists. We've been people who have transformed our environment, who've created tools, and through those tools, transformed our lives and ourselves, but never has the pace of technological change been as rapid as it is now. It's r so rapid today that within a single family, older siblings and younger siblings are growing up into somewhat different worlds. These, these uh, phenomena raise enormous questions of about our abilities to adapt. Where are we going to be in the future with these new uh, technologies? So I think it's an extremely uh, important time to be asking these questions. Uh, and uh, taking a more active role in thinking ahead, not simply allowing our technologies to develop by trial and error, but thinking ahead to what kind of lives do we want to be leading in the future? Uh, and how can we gear our current science and our current technologies uh, to realize those lives? <laughs>